Hey gang, welcome back to another video. Now every Halloween, there's typically something in our display that I want to change or upgrade. And oftentimes that comes with an opportunity to learn something new. So in this video, I'm going to do both by upgrading one of our lanterns using an Arduino and a NeoPixel ring. So let's get to it. Before we get into the build, let's take a look at how we'll need to wire up our Arduino controller for this project. There's three key points on the board that we'll need. The D6 data pin, the ground pin that is on the same side as the data pin, and lastly, the five volt out pin. These will all connect to the NeoPixel ring light that will be creating the improved flicker for my lantern. With that out of the way, let's get down to soldering. The first thing you'll wanna do after stripping off a bit of the outer covering off your wires is to tin them with a bit of solder. This will help to ensure a solid connection between the wire and the board. I'm also going to add a bit of solder to the terminal on the back of the NeoPixel ring for the same exact reason. Once that's taken care of, I can solder the wires to the data, ground, and power terminals on the back of the ring by simply pressing the wire to the ring's terminal using the tip of my soldering iron, which should reactivate the solder I just applied. And as soon as I remove the iron, we'll join the two together. With my LEDs wired up, I can switch my attention to the Arduino controller and soldering my connections to the correct pins. With the red wire going to D6, the white wire to ground, and the green wire to 5 volt out. These colors aren't necessarily important, but what is important is keeping track of what wires go where. My connections to the board were a little sloppy, so I'll use some nippers to remove any stray wires or unneeded solder from the board. Now that the brains of this build are taken care of, I can shift to the actual lantern. As you can see, it's a little worse for wear, which I like, but it only has a single flicker LED bulb and that's just not getting the job done. So I'm going to remove the globe to expose the inside of the lantern and see what my options are for mounting this ring light. But first I need to get this LED out of here. I was hoping that the opening for the wick would be wide enough to pass the Arduino through, but it wasn't. So I'll need to undo my solder joints. Once that was done, I could run the wire through the body of the lantern and out the wick opening and solder the connections again before I go any further. With that out of the way, and a quick test fit, I heat up my glue gun and apply a bit of hot glue to the wire terminals to prevent any shorting as a result of it coming into contact with any of the metal on the lantern. I'll also apply hot glue along the NeoPixel ring both to hold it in position and also to protect the connections from the elements and the lantern. This shouldn't dim the LEDs, but in the event that it does, I can control it from within the Arduino code. And speaking of code, let's take a quick look at it. Now I should mention that I am not handy with writing code and have a very basic understanding of wiring, but if I'm doing this project, so can you. That said, I found this code online and was able to modify it slightly to get the candle flicker just how I wanted, starting by selecting the data pin and the number of LEDs on my NeoPixel ring. The brightness was already set to 50, but you can adjust this number higher or lower to match your needs. For now, I'll leave it as it is. The next thing I adjusted was the color of the LEDs. This program works in four sets of three lights each for a total of 12 LEDs. Each set of three has one red light and two different shades of yellow, and they randomize their individual brightness to create the flame look. 
I tried quite a few variations and found that these three looked the most like the colors in an actual candle flame. So if you're shooting for replicating a real candle, you won't need to change this. The last thing of note is the delay. This adjusts from 10 to 50 and controls the speed of the flicker, with lower numbers creating a fast flicker and high numbers a slow one. With the basics covered, you can adjust any or all of these options to dial in the perfect settings for your project. But for this build, this is the code I'm using, which I've uploaded to my Arduino using the USB port. With the code out of the way and the hot glue still cooling, I'm going to redo the frosting on the lantern's globe. But first I'll need to wipe off the old frosting with a bit of isopropyl alcohol. Once the glass was relatively clean, I could apply some of this frost effect paint with a sponge to minimize streaks in the finish. I'll coat the globe, allow it to dry, and repeat until it's got nice even coverage. This frosting should hide any of the bright spots from the individual LEDs and will give it a nice warm glow. After the third coat had time to dry, it was ready for a bit of clear coat to help lock it in and prevent it from fading or chipping away too easily. I also decided to add some soot to the bottom edge of the globe with black spray paint, since I had a feeling that the LEDs may still be visible even with the frosted glass. Plus it'll give it a nice aged look so it works for both form and function. Now it was time to put the globe back in place. This is always a bit of a pain and will inevitably scratch the frosting, but I should be able to touch it up if necessary. The final part of this project is to enclose the Arduino. So I 3D modeled and printed a small box for it, but you could just as easily use a food storage container or some other small box to help protect it from the elements. The only thing left to do now was power it up and see what we've got. The beauty of this method is that I can plug it into my computer and make adjustments until it looks right. Plus, it's a simple enough project that it helped me to build my confidence using Arduino so that as I learn more about it, I can improve this project even further. Well, that's going to do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, but most importantly, go make something. <laughs>